That was downright cruel. What makes you think you have any right to be mad at me? You know, at the very least, I've never judged you for who you are. I'm going home. <gasps> did I break it? I did. I've never seen that happen before. I rode the bus home with I without exchanging a word. Wow. Your room. You brought Kanji here at his insistence. Why? Kanji? Sorry for barging in like this. I thought it'd be a good place. Oh, first though, there's one more thing I figured out. Rise stopped by our store the other day. She said the dolls were cute, so I told her I made them. And she said that was creepy. Kind of stung, but I kept on showing her the other stuff I made. And in the end, she said, maybe you're an amazing guy after all. Pissed me off the way she said it, but that aside, I get it now. This is what he was talking about. Just been throwing in the towel all this time. Of course no one could understand me. I've been keeping my distance out of fear. So I decided that I do things my way, no matter how tough. But it ain't just about hanging out with guys who understand you and telling the rest to get bent. You gotta make an effort if you want people to understand you. I wasn't even trying. Not just about my hobby, but like when the police suspected me. It didn't even cross my mind to try to tell them my story. I let them think whatever they want. And because of that, you, Ma, and that kid all got dragged into it. I didn't put in the slightest effort to try and make them understand. It's easier for me to act tough. Kanji is smiling brightly. So from now on, I got two rules. Rule one, be myself. Rule two, Get people to understand me. I want you to have this, Senpai. You obtain cute strap. This thing's me being me. Now I can say it straight out. Huh? That other me is me. Kanji's strong will that allowed him to accept and overcome his weakness has awakened his heart's true power. Kanji's persona has been reborn. That looks more like a fire persona than a lightning one. Haki Mikazuchi has transformed into Rokuten Mao. This? For reals? I get it. So I've become a little stronger, huh? You're my hero, dude. And my best bud. You know what? Kanji, you're my best bud, too. I don't like Yosuke, but I like Kanji. Kanji is my best bud. Yosuke, it sucks, but Kanji is the bomb. Let's go watch a movie sometime, Kanji. You can sense Kanji's straightforward feelings. You feel a tight bond between you and Kanji. Kanji is my true BFF. I really like Kanji. I do. I really like him. I have always have, but like, I don't think I ever finished his story before, but I'm glad I did this time. It was worth it. Ooh, Kanji lets you create Odin. Kanji's growth of heart has affected his persona as well. He 
evade when look at how he looks though he's got like all this fire and stuff on the sides of him he's all red now it feels like he should be a fire persona now instead of a lightning one i mean you can see the lightning still kind of on his mustache i guess that's okay but like even his sword was like a fire sword like i feel like he should be fire and Actually, I just realized he doesn't have like a second element. Like everybody else got nulls one thing and resists the second one and he doesn't have that. Gotta have a vade win though. That's weird, he doesn't have the second one. So as far as getting other people to understand me, Today, I'm holding the Oven Mitt Puppets 101 class right here. Wait, what? Don't worry, even you can do it. It'll be real cute. Believe me. You fit more time than you planned with Kanji. It has gotten dark, so you said goodbye to Kanji. There was the delivery for you left on the table. Okay, so let me show you what I was talking about. Um, so Yosuke, his persona has nullifies wind and is strong against fire, right? And Yukiko's is nullifies fire and strong against electricity. But Kanji's is just nullifies electricity. He didn't, he didn't get a strong against something. Like, that's really weird. Like, why did he not get a strong against something? Like, he should get strong against fire. Or maybe strong against physical. I don't know, something. It just feels like he got cheated out of a... Everybody else got a strong against something. He didn't get that. That doesn't seem fair to me. Weird. That's why was Kanji left out? That doesn't make sense. Like, even the developers don't respect Kanji the way he should be respectated. Ah, <laughs> summer vacation's over, but I really got a lot out of summer this year. I went to a festival. I saw some fireworks. Hit the beach. Oh, and I had watermelon. How was your summer, Joshua Kuhn? Were you satisfied with it? Well, I did all the same things you did because we did all those things together with the group, so... Yeah, I'd say so. All right! Oh, I'm glad to hear that. Then our next step is to make the most out of winter break. We've got a lot of snow around here, so we'll be able to play some winter sports. I think being able to enjoy different things at different times of year is one thing that's special about living in the countryside. The city sounds fun too, but I'd rather be able to have plenty of room to stretch. Ah, uh, Chie is ready to level up. Huh? Whoa, how long have we been talking? I got so caught up in the conversation. Oh yeah, I want you to have this. From me to you. Cocoa melon bread. Wait, this melon bread is also chocolate flavored? What? Ugh. That's my number one re recommendation lately. You should try it. Well, I'm gonna get going. Good night. Okina City, in front of Okina Station. You came here because I insisted. Hmm, I don't really feel like buying stuff today. What should we do instead? Let's just chill. Huh? What? You mean you don't have any kind of plan? Sounds boring. Oh well, maybe you'll be able to make it interesting. I seems willing enough. You know, it's pretty funny. If I didn't sign up to manage your team, you wouldn't be here with me now. Looking at it from your perspective, I'd say you got pretty lucky. Oh, 
Uh, how far do I want to push? Yeah, I appreciate it. <laughs> I guess you should be thanking me. I looks almost happy. It was your advisor who put me on your team. He said something like, I, being on a team, should teach you something about putting someone beside yourself first. I don't understand people who play sports in the slightest. But I guess it wouldn't kill me to go cheer you on every once in a while. I smiles with self-importance for some reason. It seems she's begun to like you a little. Kinda like I, I'm not gonna lie. I don't think I did her story before. Oh yeah, I did. Wait. I did some of it. I did some of her story. Hey, uh, um, Ison? Um, us meeting here like this, it must be fate, right? So, um, you wanna go uh, out with me sometime? Ha, are you kidding me? Have you looked in the mirror recently? I rejected him without a second thought, and actually pretty harsh, too. Our looks everything? Well, a guy has to look at least on par with me before I consider him. That, and he has to click with me, I guess. Besides, I'm not interested in dating anyone right now. I speak with indifference. Ugh. I'm bushed. Let's go home. Goodbye! He returned to Inaba with I and went home. Inaba Municipal Hospital, empty hospital room. Sayoko found you and brought you here. Sayoko isn't saying anything. Did something happen? Stop! Stop it. Do you think you're some kind of counselor now? I'm sorry. There's no point in taking it out on you. I just got a call from the hospital I last worked at. The patient I was assigned to died. He was still just a little child. He always said he wanted to go to school, but it looks like he'll never get that chance. You know, he proposed to me. I told him I'd think about it when he became an adult. But I... I forgot about him. When I transferred here, I was so busy. I thought about him once in a while, but soon I just forgot. But he was fighting for his life that entire time. <laughs> what am I doing? Don't blame yourself. I do. Of course I blame myself. Why did I transfer? When a patient gets better, I get left behind. But now I'm the one who left the patient behind. Should have been something I could have done. Sayako seems to be tormenting herself. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm glad you came today. Sayako looks at you needily. You feel that Sayako trusts you. I didn't really do much for her though. I'll do it. I'll do it. There has to be something, anything I can do. Goodbye. Goodbye now. You left Sayoko and went home. I was half expecting you to come and half thinking that you'd given up. <laughs> Being non-committal, floating around, never deciding to be one thing or another. Can a man understand that? I get it. Mm-hmm. I see. I suppose this kind of feeling isn't gender-specific. Kasano smiles cheerfully. I just remembered something. Before we were married, you remember that my husband and I could only meet once a year, yes? So we exchanged letters all the time. I'd wait by the mailbox every day, wondering when his next letter would arrive. The days one came would fill me with joy. But I also felt that reading it immediately would be wasteful. 
but I wanted to write my reply so badly, so I would grow impatient and read it carefully over and over. What were they about? <laughs> you know, I've forgotten after all this time. <laughs> the sun smiles. When you find yourself somebody to love, try writing a letter for them. Just one line can convey so much more of your feelings than a hundred speeches. Asano smiles nostalgically. He feels some kind of loneliness she's bearing. But you know what? I've lost the letters he'd sent me. I thought I kept them in a safe place. Well, I suppose I don't need them anymore anyway. Asano looks sad. Maybe having those letters again would cheer her up. I'll see you again. He left Asano and went home. I wonder if I'm supposed to find those letters somehow, but how? I don't know where she lives. I don't know where I would find them. Uh, have you come to see my art? Please take a look around. Take your time. Hmm, I just bought a bunch of antiques from an estate sale by a woman who lost her husband. I found these strange letters in with what I bought. They're love letters. Don't you think it's strange? Throwing them away is a bit cold, and returning them to their owner is also kind of an admission of reading them. Are these the letters that Hisano had told you about before? You asked Daedra for the letters he found. Received husband's letters. My. The letters from my husband. How? You told her they were at Daidara. My, my. Oh, my. It must have been when he came to collect the contents of the storehouse. So that's where I kept the letters. Thank you, Joshua Chan. From the bottom of this old woman's heart, I'm so happy. Masano is very happy. Oh, well, she just said so. But I'm going to burn them. What? You do not just make me go find those letters so you can burn them. Uh, I'll go get some matches. Uh, I'm not going to let her burn them. She's going to burn them. What should you do? Read them. You decided to read a little bit. The wooden well frame. I was once shorter than it. I have outgrown it in the time that we have been kept apart. That's all the postcard says. Another postcard has the short composition on it. I want to see you so much. How much sky, earth, and water do my words have to run through? On and over to reach you, my dear Hisas. Uh, Hisasan. Mm. How I wish I was this postcard. Isn't that just so sad? He had no idea that he was being deceived. I'm sure he never imagined that the Hisasan he loved would someday wish to see him dead. What do you mean? He was a kind, honest, and loyal man. He fell ill and became bedridden. I had to work to support our family. He would always apologize to me for the failing as a husband. When he did, he would smile so sadly. His illness worsened, and he must have been scared. He began to take his fear and frustration out on me. The man who had been so kind. But that didn't bother me at all. I had agreed that I would work and take care of him the day we were wed, in sickness and in health. But... he forgot. He forgot who I was, and he forgot all about me. I couldn't bring myself to love him. I couldn't forgive the way he would look at me with such confusion in his eyes. And when I cried, he would wipe my tears away. Like the man he had been all those years ago. I couldn't forgive that. I couldn't bear that. That stranger in his body, stealing his mind day after day. When he slept, I tried to kill him. But I couldn't. 
While I was standing over him, he looked up and he smiled at me. That same smile he gave me when I was a girl. And in the same voice he would use to tell me he loved me, he asked, Who are you, ma'am? Oh my god, this is really hard. That was three years ago. After that day, he would forget who I was every morning. Every day he would ask me, who are you? And every day I would answer, who am I today? I was a total stranger to him until the very end. He was being cared for by a stranger as he passed away. That was his punishment, punishment for forgetting me. Wow. This is gut-wrenching. I don't even think there's a right answer for this. If... I think I just say nothing. I was relieved. Before I could feel anything else, I felt relief. Relief that it was finally over for both of us. It was then that I realized that I had been wanting him to die. And because I wished it, he left this world and went to the gods. I am death itself. God. That's really brutal and like, I've never thought about how... That would... That probably happens and like, that would be hard. That'd be so hard. Like... Obviously, there are people who, as they get older, disease does cause them to forget things. And you see stories and commercials a lot of the time about, like, a daughter or a son taking care of their parents who have forgotten them. And that's gut-wrenching in a way. In its own way. Not in a way. In its own way. That's gut-wrenching. It's really hard, obviously. But I've never thought about like what it would be like to be the person that you were, you know, married to and loved for a lifetime and then have them forget you. And not just how hard that would be, but like the way she was describing, like every day he forgot me, like, and yet at the same time, he was still the same person. He just was the person without the memories. Oh god, that would be so hard. This is really sad. This is what I was talking about earlier when I was saying that, like, the character stories in this game... Persona 4, the, the actual storyline to Persona 4 I don't think is great, but the character stories are just... really intense. You feel that you understand Hasano a bit more. Please, throw the letters away. I can't bear to see them anymore. I don't want to touch them anymore. I'm sorry. You weren't able to give Hisano back the letters from her husband. Perhaps you should speak with the owner of Daidara. Hmm, he came at a good time. Do you remember those letters I gave you before? Well, I found more of them. If you want these two, you're more than welcome to them. He decided to take the letters. Received Hisano's letters. Ugh. The hotel we stayed in for the school trip was horrible. The bed would suddenly spin and the pink lights. How tacky. And when I walked the halls at night, this big round red thing was walking around. I'm positive that hotel is haunted. I'm positive she's talking about Teddy. It's the ghost of a bear. Huh? Why specifically a bear? And bears aren't red, though they could be roundish. I is immersed in thought. There were so many boring things about it, like studying and field trips. 
But I was able to go to the store I wanted to, so I guess it wasn't all horrible. Hey! Wow, it's pretty late. I should get going home. Oh yeah, I've got something for you. I'm giving this to you. You received tap soda from I. This is the thank you for today. Because you were here, I wasn't bored. Would you mind walking me home? Good night. You saw I home and returned to your own home. <laughs> <laughs>